stroke. Did you know that every year more than 15 million people worldwide have a stroke? In the United States, stroke is the third leading cause of death. More than 140,000 people die each year from stroke. Stroke is the leading cause of serious, long-term disability. Of these, 5 million die and another 5 million are left disabled. While most strokes occur in people over age 65, they can occur in much younger people too. But what exactly is a stroke? The brain, like all parts of the body, needs oxygen. A stroke happens when blood flow to the brain is cut off. When brain cells are starved of oxygen, they become damaged and the symptoms that follow are called a stroke. As the brain controls the whole body, the symptoms of a stroke can be wide-ranging, depending on which parts of the brain are affected. If a stroke occurs here, it would cause a drooping face. Here, weakness in the arms or legs, or here, difficulty speaking. Other symptoms can happen too, like changes in balance, loss of vision, and memory loss. The effects can be barely noticeable, but are more likely to be severe and disabling. Sometimes, these changes can be reversed if treatment is started early. That's why it's so important to act quickly if you suspect a stroke. Remember to get help fast. F is for face. Is their face drooping on one side? Can they smile? A is for arms. Is there weakness in the arms? Can they lift them both up? S is for speech. Is their speech slurred? T is for time. If you notice any of these signs, then it's time to call 911. At the hospital, a doctor will assess you and arrange for an urgent scan of the head, which is an MRI. This shows where the brain is damaged and what type of stroke has happened. Strokes are put into two groups depending on the problem in the blood vessels supplying the brain. They can either be a blockage, called an ischemic stroke, or a bleed, called hemorrhagic stroke. The majority of strokes are blockages. It's important to identify early on what type of stroke has happened, as they can each have very different treatments. Blockage strokes are commonly caused by the buildup of fatty materials in the blood vessels. This fatty buildup may lead to a clot, which blocks the blood vessels, just like in a heart attack. This is why a stroke can be thought of as a brain attack. A clot may occur within the brain or it can travel from another place in the body, commonly the blood vessels in the neck. Clots can also travel from the heart, which can happen when you have an irregular heartbeat, such as atrial fibrillation. If a blockage stroke is detected within three hours, a clot-busting medication is given to dissolve the clot. This is called thrombolysis. If thrombolysis can't be used, other medications such as aspirin will be used. Hemorrhagic strokes happen when a blood vessel bursts suddenly, causing blood to lean in and around the brain. In these strokes, the blood in the brain can lead to swelling and extreme intracranial pressure, a serious problem which can require surgery in some cases. Sometimes stroke symptoms completely disappear in less than 24 hours. This is called a mini-stroke or TIA transient ischemic attack. With TIAs, often symptoms only last a few minutes. Just as in a full-blown stroke, the patient must seek immediate medical attention if you detect a TIA. This is because a TIA is a warning sign that you are at risk of having a full stroke. Whether you have a TIA or a stroke, lifelong daily medications are started right away to help prevent further episodes. The effects of a stroke can be disabling, but given time, the brain can slowly adapt to restore some previously lost abilities. This is why stroke rehab is so important. Rehab can be challenging, but many specialists are on hand to help alongside doctors and nurses. If the stroke causes difficulty swallowing, dietitians can recommend special diets, utensils, or feeding tubes. If the patient has problems with communication, speech and language therapists can help. If it has become difficult to walk or perform daily tasks, physical therapists and occupational therapists can offer exercises and home adaptation to restore activities of daily living functions. Also, after a stroke, people often feel frustrated or depressed that they can't do the things that they used to and they don't like being dependent on others. Counselors can help talk through these feelings and recommend groups to refer to for further support. We've talked about strokes, but what can we do to prevent them from happening? 
even if you've already had a stroke in the past, there are many steps we can all take to reduce our chances of having a stroke, such as lowering high blood pressure, the number one cause of stroke, stopping smoking, lowering cholesterol, being more active, eating healthy, lowering alcohol intake, and keeping good control of blood sugar levels if you have diabetes.